Next curve. Hi everyone, this is Leonard Lee, Managing Director of Next Curve, and I am here in San Diego, sunny San Diego, beautiful San Diego, at the Intercontinental Hotel here in downtown. And I am joined here by Azita Arvani of Rakuten Symphony, and we have here Durga Maladi of Qualcomm. And you guys want to introduce yourself really quick? Sure, I'm Azita Arvani, I'm General Manager of Rakuten Symphony in Americas, basically responsible for the business in Americas and Head of Global Government Affairs. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Durga Maladi, I'm uh, SVP and GM for uh, Cellular Modems and Infrastructure. Uh, I'm responsible for uh, the 5G technology roadmap for uh, all the business units. In addition to that, uh, I run the infrastructure business and uh, uh, a lot of the cellular connectivity that is non-handset and non-Snapdragon related cellular connectivity. Wonderful. And so, thank you both for being here and uh, joining me and giving me the opportunity to interview both of you. Um, this is 5G Summit. We're going to be talking about 5G. You guys are doing some, both doing some incredible things in that front. And But the most important thing that uh, I think we're going to try to do in this session is we're going to have Durga smile and laugh a little bit. <laughs> See, we already got it started, it's wonderful. All right. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna get started. So Rocket 10 Mobile, Rocket 10 Symphony. Uh, one of the things that I uh, posted recently was that you guys were, I mean, if it really wasn't, for, if it wasn't for Rocket 10, there really wouldn't be an Open RAN, right? And Open RAN is like one of the big topics of today. It, it's become a topic du jour for a lot of different reasons, not only from a technical perspective, but geopolitical. There's a lot of things, many reasons why Open RAN is important. And, um, and one of the things I really wanna do here as we kick this discussion off is talk about the relationship that uh, that Rakuten has had, Rakuten Mobile as well as Symphony has had with Qualcomm. I know that you guys have been really uh, deep partners and um, you have a critical relationship. It'd be great if you guys can share the nature of that and some of the exciting things that you're doing. Sure, I'd be happy to. So just to start with, as you mentioned, we are, uh, you're smiling. Yeah, you're smiling. smiling. That's, That's what it's all about. We're glad you talked about it. Yeah, cool. sure. Uh, but you know that open architecture, the cloud native architecture, really allows for network to be a platform for innovation. So we can bring a lot of partners in to work on innovations, and we have to constantly uh, innovate, right? We right. cannot uh, sit on our laurels because we had an innovation, you know, a few years ago. So, anyways. We started with Qualcomm back four years ago, back in 2018, when we started to become a mobile network operator. And the relationship back then was, you know, how do we bring this the the the, um, the quality of service that customers are uh, experiencing outside, outdoors, bring them indoors, both in 4G and in 5G. So uh, we worked with Qualcomm and their FSM chip for uh, 4G small cells and also with 5G. With 5G with millimeter wave at 28 gigahertz, uh, we designed a small cell together that actually is at the same cost level as a, as a enterprise Wi-Fi which is just amazing, unheard of. So we are very proud of the relationship that we started back then. And as we move through now, uh, right before Mobile World Congress, we announced that we're working with Qualcomm on two new uh, RAN solutions, if you will, the, the one on the, the radio unit side, which is very exciting, and uh, QRU, uh, basically offering massive MIMO for uh, mid-band for 5G. And then on the DU side, uh, the QDU as well. So we're mm -hmm. basically an accelerator card that right. helps with the, with the virtualized DU. So we are very excited about this, and I'm sure this is just a, another stop in the evolution of the journey of the partnership that we'll have with, with Qualcomm. Okay, so we have Durga over there. He just has this huge grin on his face. <laughs> I can tell he, he wants to say something. So what do you have to add? All right, so uh, I'm going to actually uh, uh, say that I think our relationship has grown much stronger over the last four years and I would actually categorize that in two distinct phases. Uh, in the beginning in 2018, if you kind of think about it, today yes we all talk about uh, ORAN networks and RAN virtualization, there's a lot of people who are talking about it, but back then in 2018, there were hardly any. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rakuten Mobile was the first operator that said, we're going to go right from ground up. We're going to start building this network as ORAN compliant and with the virtualized network. Mm -hmm. 
it hadn't been done before right. and it's quite it's been quite a journey actually along those mm -hmm. lines in fact we were in the trenches with mm -hmm. them as a part of we provided our small cell solutions especially for millimeter wave right. powering the network all oran compliant mm -hmm. but because it had never been done before i feel like we went through this journey of you know getting all of that done mm -hmm. as in, in terms of bringing the network to uh, uh, to full blown commercialization but more importantly in addition to that also <coughs> learning a lot of the lessons as to what you know right. what are the things that you have to do right it's not just about yeah. learning the things that you know right. but also learning what not to do right. so we feel like you know going through the trenches uh, uh, it was quite a quite a unique experience in itself and uh, now you have a ton of experience in your back so that was like phase 1 The next phase is is now, as Azita mentioned, where back in 2020 we introduced our uh, macro cell portfolio mm -hmm. with modem RF solutions because we focused on high performance and uh, low power consumption and overall high transmit power based RU massive MIMO RU and virtualized DU solutions with an accelerator card that simply plugs into a server. Right. These are high capacity, high performance solutions. Uh, typically one would associate them with premium tier but this is not small cells anymore yeah. and uh, it was we were really glad and happy that uh, rakuten selected us as a part of that journey that they are actually embarking towards and this announcement was made in uh, maybe 2 months back in mwc in barcelona right, right. Yep. where we talked about our du solutions and ru solutions and uh, now looking forward to the second phase as we try to bring this through lab integration and commercialization right yeah. And one other thing I would add, Durga, to the second phase, as you very eloquently put it, it's it, this is not just for Rockton Mobile. This is something that Rockton Symphony could offer to operators right. around the globe. So yeah. it's it's really absolutely a, another evolution in the in the business of it too. Yeah. Okay. Well, so uh, you know, I know Turek, and I know he's a pretty demanding guy, very hard to please. What is it about Qualcomm that really kind of, um, you know, uh, what is it about? Qualcomm, what they bring to the table that really took things um, to the levels of the relationship that you guys have right now. You know, with the technical collaboration and the partnership and design and and in building these these hardwares, right? Because it, you know, there's been so much attention on software in open RAN. People forget. Well, you need to have hardware to run this stuff on, right? Right. right, right. So you can virtualize. You can have virtualized software, but if the hardware can't support what you're trying to do, right, it's tough, right? right? And so, uh, you know, you guys are continuing to go through this journey, learn, and uh, you know, if you could maybe speak to some of the uh, things that Qualcomm brings to the table. That sure, absolutely. I would say that you know, when I I start a little bit before Qualcomm and then bring Qualcomm in. So when I talk about new generations of mobile networks, I usually talk about this acronym DNC. It just makes it easier for me, okay. like device, network, and content, right? Mm -hmm. So device, obviously, for 5G, the devices have to be there, and Qualcomm has always been a strong player on the yeah. device side, right? right. When, it, when it comes to network, it's really a newer uh, part of uh, Qualcomm's business, and we're very happy that that uh, under leadership of Durga, now that infrastructure part of it has really come to fruition, right? The small cells, that, as he mentioned in the first phase, and now with the macro cells. So that network uh, then brings, you know, with the open network and cloud native, we're bringing in new services. And as you mentioned, it's the, the radio unit that's obviously very important on the radio side and transmitting mm -hmm. radio frequencies, but also on the on the virtualized DU, right? The DU is very latency sensitive. It's right. got high right. throughput requirements. It's high reliability. All of those things are something that you can't just put it on a server and expect right. it to run. Exactly. So it really needs that accelerator card. And that accelerator card has to be high performance, low power. Okay. Those are types of things yeah. that Qualcomm has been great in on the device side and they bring yeah. that that expertise now applied to a different domain. Right. So then that that takes care of the network and then the device and network and then that enables new content, right? Yeah. New services whether right. it's uh, industry 4.0, enterprise, consumers, you know, fintech, you name it, it all comes in. Right. And you know, it provides opportunities for the two of us, the uh, two companies to go to customers and whether they're operators to Offer new services, or whether customers, customers, you know, con consumer enterprises or governments, industries, to help them along too. 
Well, this got this has to be really exciting for you guys at Qualcomm, right? I mean, you know, so there's a thing that Cristiano t- talks about all the time, which is like the connected intelligent edge, right? And you guys have pretty much dominated or been a huge force in driving the, the edge, right? And then you have the access network and then you have the other side, which is all the network equipment. Uh, I mean, you're finding yourselves on the other side. How does that feel? So, uh, first of all, uh, you know, I just want to thank Rakuten uh, for, uh, you know, those words about Qualcomm. Indeed, it's, uh, you know, we've been doing our best in terms of delivering all the products and there is something uh, when when it comes to, you know, these modem RF solutions that we are talking of, uh, we have a pretty high bar for ourselves and we don't make any commitments to customers unless we truly believe in it ourselves as well. So that's one of the things that has always put us in the right forefront of these cutting edge technologies. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully that's going to help out as we move into the infrastructure domain as well. To your point on connected intelligent edge, one of the reasons why we started talking a lot about it a lot more maybe from second half of last year. Mm. We felt that uh, we are now in, actually we are just about in the fourth year of 5G. It's been about three years since 5G was deployed in you know some parts of the world, US for sure, US, Korea, Japan, China, Australia and Europe. And as we kind of think about it, we have a lot of things to accomplish in 5G. The vision for 5G is much, much bigger than what we have seen so far in commercial deployments. Right. And one of the things that we wanted to uh, think through back two years back was, to make sure that we have a very rich and vibrant ecosystem, not just in the device category, but also on the network side, because we feel that it takes both sides to eventually uh, bring the overall 5G vision to, to, uh, you know, the overall vision to fruition. And so the idea of a connected intelligent edge is a combination of, well, devices have to be intelligently connected, not just connected as such, but intelligently connected, which means they are capable of doing some of the processing themselves, not just connectivity, but doing some processing. Right. Conversely, if a device is not really connected to the network, then it's not quite in the same league. By definition, it might or not be as intelligent to begin with. Sure. So there's that portion of it. But the second part is you also need to have the capability in the network to do the processing there and a lot of the processing especially for latency sensitive applications has to be at the edge so you're talking of high performance radios yes low latency but in addition to low latency a lot of the edge computing and even ai algorithms that have to be implemented at the edge to do all of this when we say that we are now powering the modem RF solution on infrastructure that happens to be literally at the edge of the radio access network there's a lot more after that we are not actually doing that. We are not doing the CU and the core and so on. We are not an infrastructure vendor. Yeah. So the overall theme of Connected Intelligent Edge is nothing but what we are talking of over here. The ability to bring in solutions which truly move the needle both on the network and on the device side. And we are doing right. our part there. We are working with a large number of partners. Right. We are not an OEM, we are not an infrastructure vendor. But we have more of a horizontal solution working with a large number of partners in this space. Right, right. And yeah, and I think that that's part that that is the DNA of Qualcomm, right? I mean, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are a lot more than just connectivity uh, because we have so yeah. much of processing capability that we bring to the table. But right. in effect, that's the overall vision of the connected intelligent edge that we talk about. Yeah. Wonderful. So now, um, one last thing that I want to ask you uh, both. So, what can we expect uh, from coming out of uh, uh, 5G Summit from both of you? Is is there anything that uh, my audience can uh, get excited about? Oh, there's there's always a lot to get excited about <laughs> in the or at life. But I I, I truly believe that uh, you know we need to catch the 5G wave uh-huh. um, uh, with open RAN and cloud native and massive automation mm-hmm. you know this is the time and and for everyone who's thinking about you know they have uh, some spectrum that they want to put 5g on or they, they are thinking about maybe ripping some of the old uh, equipment and modernizing it they need to seriously consider the open RAN cloud native and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, autonomous network option. Right, because otherwise they're putting something in their network that's going to be there for at least a decade, mm-hmm. and yeah. and that's that instead of having it be an anchor in the past, 
it should be a platform for the future. Right. So I uh, truly believe that this is the time. And whether you're a green field operator or a brown field operator, yeah. you need to seriously consider yeah. about this or, or else get left behind. Uh, I was just going to say that, you know, tomorrow it's going to be action packed. We're going to start with Cristiano's keynote. So I don't want to say yeah. anything about tomorrow, but <laughs> stay tuned is all I can say. We're going to talk about lots of things. We're going to talk about technology. We're going to talk about devices. We're going to talk about infrastructure. There are lots of sessions on uh, an enterprise viewpoint, automotive viewpoint, compute viewpoint and so on. So stay tuned yeah. is all I can say to your audience. Uh, um, we have a to panel together. And we have a panel discussion. So I'm a moderator <laughs> in the panel. Yes. This is something new. So I'm looking forward to hearing from uh, yeah. Azita tomorrow and, and other guests. And there you have it. Stay tuned. <laughs> and live here from uh, in, from the Intercontinental Hotel here in San Di downtown San Diego, uh, 5G Summit uh, tomorrow. Stay tuned. And we will be back with more. Uh, follow us at www.next-curve.com for more coverage of this wonderful event. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you both. Really appreciate your time Absolutely. and um, have a wonderful conference. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Visit us at www.next-curve.com.